everybody, and welcome again to another episode of the RN to Writer Show. I'm your host, Elizabeth Haynes, RN. I'm a nurse, but I became a freelance writer. And today, I help other nurses become freelance writers to discover this secret career that nurses don't know exists. Today, I have a very special podcast for you that you are going to want to share all over your social media. I would like you all to welcome my friend, Jennifer Goforth Gregory. Jennifer has been writing about artificial intelligence for more than eight years and freelancing for 15 years, putting her in a unique position to help other writers with chat GPT. Her clients include IBM, Microsoft, Adobe, Verizon, Google, Meta, AT&T, and HPE. And by the way, She just launched a course called Improving Your Productivity by AI Writing, and we are here today to talk about the question, is ChatGPT going to take all the writing jobs? Welcome, Jennifer. It's so good to be here. Thank you so much for having me. And and I'll go ahead and answer the first question. No. (laughs) Exactly, right? Not at all. And and I want to say, most importantly, I actually think This is going to be a very positive thing for writers. In the long run, the short term is going to be a little bumpy. I think in the long term, we're going to actually end up being more valued. And the skills that human writers have and add is going to be even higher, um, is is my prediction. I don't think this is something to be scared of. I think it's something to be aware of and to embrace. And the fact that you are listening to this episode means that you've already taken the first step of wanting to learn about it. Absolutely. We've been fielding so many questions at our writer from not only members, but prospective members who are like, well, awesome. I just discovered this. I was so excited. I was getting ready to buy your course. And now I'm thinking there's no point in it. And I tell people, and this is true for you too. We've been in this industry so long. We have been to this rodeo multiple times. We have seen this with the advent of the World Wide Web where everybody was like, oh, now all the writing jobs are going to go away. And then there were content mills producing crappy content for pennies on the word. And, you know, and now it's AI. And like you said, it's it's not going to take our writing jobs away. First of all, I tell people we're not really as nurses our product or service is not the writing, it's our inside knowledge of healthcare that clients really want. But um, tell us a little about your background, Jennifer, and why you know so much about this. So I have spent been my um, in, in tech my whole career and was even in, in the room when they were starting um, coming up with how to use the cell phones to know your location at IBM. Um, so I've really grown up with, with tech and I am super passionate about helping writers just like Beth is to move to, to, to be their best self to support their families and have really devoted the past decade to writing a blog to help writers move into content if that's what they want to do. And um, a book. And, and a book, yes. <laughs> the book is five years old, um, but it's still it's still pretty relevant. I'm going to be updating it at some point. Um, until this chat GPT thing came up, This that was my spring project, but it didn't happen. Uh, so my background is that because there's a lot out there right now about chat GPT and there's a lot about freelancing, but a lot of what I have found is not from the freelancer perspective and how to use it in our specific world and needs. So I was going to say, Jennifer, I forgot to interject this. You and I presented at Content Marketing yes. World almost seven years ago. How, how crazy is that? Anyway, wow. so yeah, we've been at this a while. So Jennifer, could you demonstrate chat GPT for us so that the audience can actually see it and people may not be familiar with what it is or how it works. So this will be awesome. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, perfect. So this is chat GPT and all you could do is go to the address here and Beth, can you put that into the show notes? Yep, exactly. Um, and you set up a free account. You can have a free account or paid, recommend the free. The only downside is that occasionally you'll get a server overloaded busy. I do find if you're outside of 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern, 
when the whole world's awake. Um, you can get on better if you don't just get right back on. So as you can see, artificial intelligence sounds fancy and scary and complicated. It, it's not. There's just a text box here and you put in a request and you get it back and it will have a conversation with you. You can ask it questions and and follow up. It's similar to have you ever used a um, a chat on like the cable company website and it's actually a robot. Mm -hmm. So it's very similar. That's called a chat bot, which is similar to what chat GPT is. It's a fancier version. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask it to write um, a short, a short article, um, write two paragraphs. about recovering from, um, so it's two paragraphs recovering from mastectomy. And I do wanna add that I don't recommend using it to write things. Um, mainly what I recommend it is for non-writing tasks. And we, we'll talk about that a little bit more, unless that's what your client specifically asking you to do. I have been hearing of clients asking people to start with a chat GPT article and then um, make it more interesting in tone of voice. So what we got back is pretty kind of boring. Um, well, I want to just interject that I did um, a similar query to chat GPT about, uh, I said, write, write like a 400 word article on recovering after mastectomy. And it's word for word identical to this. So yes. that is concerning. That's something yes. that people should know, even if you're using this as a launching pad for an article the plagiarism risk here is quite high. <laughs> so this is what I've been telling people, and this is what I'm doing it. So you should use this the same you use as Google. This is a published article. I would not say, just like you wouldn't, even if you, we all do research online, we look at other people's research, we look at studies, but we don't take even a sentence, even a phrase. It's not ours, it's plagiarism. It's the same thing. You can use it. It, it, do not copy even a sentence, even a phrase. Exactly. So anyway, please go on. How, how, so if we're not using it for this purpose, yep. how would you use it? So what you can use it for is one is getting ideas. So let's say you aren't familiar with this and you want to um, know some topics to include in an article. So this is giving, this will give me an idea for an article. Mm. This is something that a lot of novice writers in particular, like a lot of nurses coming to writing, struggle with ideation. Mm -hmm. Like they're, they're, they don't understand how to focus an idea. Yep. So this would be great for that. And this is the thing. I don't recommend using this exactly. What I recommend is using it as a starting point for your own creativity. Right. So, for example, coping strategies for an emotional recovery. So maybe you could use um, some experiences you've had with helping other patients. Are you like, oh, wait, you know, three different people have told me three different things, three different things helped other patients. And you can it spark that from your own wealth of knowledge. Um or even exercise and physical, maybe you've personally seen that certain types of exercises and getting back into routine from helping other patients is better. So, but you might not have thought of this. Yes. And that hits the nail on the head because for example, nurses who have worked with mastectomy patients know all the tricks that you really never read anywhere. Like if you have swelling, wrap your arm this particular exact way. And that's the stuff that clients consider gold because yes. nobody else has that. And nobody knows that except a nurse. Exactly. And so when you do this for ideas, this use it as a, as a um, place to start. You can use it to create an outline. And this is good if you aren't not sure how to get started and what to include. So this is an outline from nutrition and recovery from mastectomy. 
Interesting. The big thing here is you're going to also need to make sure, one of the really weird things about ChatGPT is it can be wrong and it's very confident and there could be, um, so you would, you definitely need to fact check any ideas. Just like I view it as a irreputable website. We all still look at it, but we then go verify it. Exactly. Yeah. Don't, don't necessarily take what you see here at, at face value. Like, you know, I'm looking at, you know, calcium and vitamin D for bone health. I never was a mastectomy nurse. Um, maybe that's correct. I, as a former plastic surgery nurse, I'm thinking in terms of vitamin C, vitamin A, like those are important for tissue healing. So yes, good advice. Be sure that you you know, make sure it's accurate. Don't, yeah. don't take it at face value. And so what I would take it from here is, wait, are there extra vitamins that, so not just the same calcium vitamin D, but should I go talk with some of my physicians or, uh, you know, uh, oncology nurse to see, is there somebody, is calcium vitamin D the right, are there others? So use it as a starting point. Um, and so let's say we write the article and now we need a headline. Yes, so I, that is hard. I think it has. So the other thing you can do is you can talk to it. So you could also say, like, tell me more about the foods or make this less formal or make this for a younger person. If it's a someone, so I don't know if there would be a difference between someone under 40 and someone over 60. So I've been telling people to do what's called prompt engineering, which is write as as much. So I'll do a prompt engineering right now, which is giving the more specifics you give into the prompt, the better it is. So write a headline for a mastectomy patient on recovery that is under 40 years old. Um, and that will be posted on a hospital blog. Um, the, the article is warm and informal. Wow, that's very specific. You want to be as specific as you can. So, it really likes explanation marks. <laughs> I do too, coincidentally. But... So you can do let's do let's do five, right? Five. So these are empowering. Nice. Um, and you could then do it. Um, all right, it is over 60. Um, the tone is um, more formal. <laughs> Finding strength in your golden year. You know, I'm in that age group and... <laughs> I don't, I don't like seniors and golden years. No, I'm just kidding. Now, would you use Check these? Out. Like, yeah, you know, your, your audience. So I don't think people would like that. Um, but it does give some idea. And what I often do is combine multiple of the headlines. Right. I was going to say, do you use these? Would you use these verbatim? No. Are these safe to use verbatim? You would still adapt them. I would definitely adapt them because I'm pretty sure it's told five other people the same headline. Yeah. Um, but I've been using a headline analyzer for years um, to help improve it. So I would combine it. I would change it. But it, it, headlines are often for me, I just need a place to start. Um, so they could also do social media posts. Um, right. A social media post or a blog. And you can specify the platform. 
So write a LinkedIn, it should be more formal. Attention seniors. Okay, I would never put that by the way. <laughs> um, and you can also then say, right, social for a blog for on caring for a mastectomy patient. I noticed that it put hashtags in there. Can you use it for hashtags? Okay, so I'm going to get really excited here, but I think hashtags is the best example because you can use them verbatim. They're, you're, they are right. The hashtags right. are right. I spent a lot of time looking at them. So if you do use chat GPT for nothing else, use it for hashtags. How do you, how do you do that? Do you put the topic in? Do you have to put the platform in? Do you mean, do for, you mean to get hashtags? Yeah. Like, can you put, give me hashtags give for me Twitter? Hashtags, stuff like this. Hashtags for mastectomy. And excuse my typing here. Um, See, these are right. Yeah, those are good. Mm -hmm. So, and then you could, um, you could, oh, here's a good one. Um, which um, hashtag is most popular? You want to... Okay, so sometimes it'll tell you it can't do what you want. However, it actually did. Look, it told me yeah. which are the most popular. Yeah, that actually worked well. Yep. Um, and so you can also, um, one of the things that I have used it for when the outline, we talked about the outline, you can put in your article that you wrote originally and oh. ask it to create an outline from it. And if your article isn't well structured, it's not going to do it well. And you're going to be able to immediately see your problem with the writing in the outline. That is super helpful. We were just having a discussion in one of the coaching sessions about this. And, and again, some, some people come, come into this industry and writing is an industry and it's a venerable industry and it has conventions for how it operates and so on and so forth. And people struggle with writing those articles. It takes them a long time. They over-research. It frustrates them. They're like, I can't get it down. And I'm always saying, just start with a quick and dirty pen and paper outline of like bullet points. And this is the perfect way to do that. Like you don't even have to get a pen and paper. You can just have it outlined for you. Or as you said, take the article you're unhappy with, you feel is unwieldy, put it in here and see what it gives you back as the outline. And then you can structurally figure it out. I, I That and the hashtags to me is the best. The other thing you can do if you wanted to create um, a social media post um, for an article that already exists, you just plug it in. So if you have one on your blog that you want to create one for, you just say, please create a social media post and you put in the link. Cool. Um, so it, you can get information now. It only goes up to 2021. So it is limited, but it is still a good place to start. Because even So what are some associations? Let's say you want to get some, um, you want to talk to some, some of the um, groups that help with the recovery so you want to find the best ones and maybe there's some you haven't thought about now you know me i see this and i'm instantly thinking marketing like I'm thinking to myself, I'd be plugging in there. Who are the top manufacturers of um, um, diabetes glucometers? And I have an instant prospect list. Yep. And then you can say who are the top experts. Like let's say you want to. And now these would still need to be vetted. And it was a little general. I know I did it for content marketing, and it nailed it directly. Um. 
Everything needs vetting. And I can't stress this enough to all the listeners, um, no matter how much experience you have, opportunities need to be vetted. Companies, prospects need to be vetted. Sources need to be vetted. Everything. So that just saved, even if they're not all accurate or right, we just got seven names. And if we were going to do that in Google, that would have taken a half an hour. Yes. I had no idea. This is fascinating to me. I'm so I'm so glad you came on because on the one hand, I was like, oh, people are getting in a flap over something that it's it's a tempest in a teapot. But now here it actually has applications that are useful that I had no idea about. Okay, so here this is one of the limitations is it doesn't cite where things are from. Yes. Um, so, so, but statistics are hard to nail down. So, even if you have this, sometimes I, with some of my statistics I've been playing around with, it tells where it's from. These, it's not. So, you would then need to go find the sources. But it at least, even coming up with these eight would have taken you thirty minutes on Google because they're such a pain. Right. Um, so, this is a place to start. Are they accurate? Are they from a reputable source? all of that, but it's, it's a place to start. So um, w- would you like um, to do that, copy and paste that into Google and see if it comes up verbatim from somewhere? Yep. So that's what I would do. I would okay. say like, okay, I would copy this in Google and see where it can, I would copy it verbatim. Okay. That's what I did on, I had five on hybrid work. Three were legitimate. I think one it completely made up. (laughs) (laughs) Well, there we go. One was like had the a wrong date, and one. Well, the bottom line is Chat GPT is not a source. Like you, you would never cite it. So if I figure out where you can cite from, and it's similar to Wikipedia. A lot of writers, myself included, it's never a source. However, there's a bit a big list of sources at the bottom. Yes. And I have used that to go to the primary source before, especially when I don't know a topic. So I consider it similar to a Wikipedia page. Now, this is all extremely exciting to me. Fascinating. What are some cautions? I'm going to stop the screen share if that's okay. Oh, yeah. What are some cautions that you would have for for people, especially, you you know, we we get a lot of questions in our programs about is this plagiarism, is that plagiarism? There's a lot of uncertainty about that. And so we're we're dealing with we're working with people who need to know very basic information. And we always tell people there's no dumb questions. We all had to learn this. So yep. what are any cautionary things you would say about using chat GPT as a writer? I would not copy paste anything. I would use it as an inspiration and then write originally. Um, the hashtags and some headlines possibly being places that you could, you know, use phrases. Right. Headlines um, in particular can't even be copyrighted, I don't think. Yeah. Labels can't and, be. I don't know. And, and and what I've been doing with my headlines is I've been combining stuff. Using, and then I will go check to see if there's another one that says that. But I do that anyway. It's one thing that we do talk about or that I say outright is, there are only so many ways to, for example, describe what is a fever in an adult. Like, And so on the one hand, you have to be cautious about plagiarism. On the other hand, there is no unique way to describe what a fever is in an adult, for example. So, um, and the other thing is too, I look at, for example, lists of symptoms like recipes, like lists of ingredients can't be copyrighted. Right. Now, I still try my best to put those in my own words or in my own sequence. Um, but, you know, what can I say? There's so much, pu- so many billions of words have been published on the web. <laughs> Finding no, a you- unique way to say something is challenging. Another use that we didn't talk about is is SEO. I know that's probably an area that you get a lot of questions about. Um so if you're one of the ways I found it is if you need to create a title that has a keyword in it, which is true with a lot of projects, you can say create a title with 
mastectomy recovery in the in the title and it helps with that the other thing i was able to do last night was i plugged in like a two paragraph article or a 400 word article is said, can you evaluate this for seo and it told me i needed to add in a seo keyword i gave the keyword and it, i told me i needed to add it in twice and it wasn't in the headline um it was right yeah that's interesting the other example, if you're working with a client on keywords, is it can tell you which ones are better than others. Um, I I did a little bit of playing. It seemed accurate enough. Um, that's all a guessing game anyway. Um, the other thing, do your do um, anyone in your program, do y'all ever have to write meta descriptions for articles? Yeah. Well, we so, teach it. Okay. So people will write them. Oh, that's fantastic. Because I tell people, I think meta descriptions are often misconstrued. It's like yep. that, that has to be clickable. That, that and, is what gets the click. And I, 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 I think it might be okay. That might land that that's something we can use it before pretty close. I wouldn't do that without checking with your client. But the meta descriptions I was playing around with are really good. Yeah, I, 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 and that's another thing. Headlines, meta descriptions, yeah. any of that stuff that requires more of the copywriting skill, mm -hmm. that that clicky stuff without being clickbait. But I mean, there's ways yeah. to manipulate words that make it irresistible without being clickbait. Um, that's not my strength. And so anything that can help with that is welcome to me. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to start and using this for my blog. I just looked up a couple of the experts that it listed. And it looks like it was relatively accurate. Cool. But there'd be someone in there that's not, but I, I looked up three and that's they excellent. were a good place to start. Uh, and the, the, other, and the other one that I was able to find last night, I was working on like looking for diverse sources and I was able to come up with some underrepresented groups of experts that I wasn't able to by finding, um, I was looking for insurance agents that would be were from underrepresented groups and I came up with like three associations that I wouldn't have even known to look for. That's really important. Yep. Um, Correct. Very important. Thank you for bringing that up. Anything and, else that you want to add or cool uses no. you have found for this? <laughs> I'm glad you're finding this interesting. Is this more than you expected? Um. No, it's just that this is an this is an area that I know very little about. Like I'm an expert in a lot of things, but I I just said previously I'm in an age group that's older. I'm not a technology native by any means. Um and I know writing, but I also know that things are evolving and yeah. I don't know anything about this, so it fascinates me. The other thing I want everyone to remember, I was on a webinar yesterday. So 95% of the people, probably higher in the medical field, are beginners at this. But 95% of the people in marketing are beginners at this. Everybody's a beginner. So if you feel like you're behind the curve, you don't know what it is, that's because it's new. It's not because you're stupid or behind or not techie. It's because it's brand new and everybody's there. So people should not feel like they're behind. This is also an opportunity then, because so if any of you in the audience have an interest in technology, artificial intelligence, and the intersection of it with healthcare, this is the time to start positioning yourself as the expert on this, seeking out assignments, pitching articles on this. Yeah, absolutely. I have written some in, in, in that. I, I I can't go deep into the health part, but if it stays more on the tech, I have written for um, healthcare IT um, companies. It is booming if you if you can cross the provider and the technical, then you can earn unlimited amount of money because there's a lot there's not a lot of people that can do that, and I can cross. What my strength is, is I can cross technical to non-technical, but I can't, can, I have not been able to successfully do it to healthcare professionals because it's a very different audience. Um, if you I, can do that, I recommend stopping what you're doing and focusing on that. 
<laughs> I've been saying for a couple of years that there's been opportunity with chatbots that triage patients because yeah. nurses or other providers are the ones that in that script have to make the call of this is the point where they need a real human being. Is your fever over 103? Yes, they need someone, you know what I mean? Like a chat bot then can't go on. And so this is kind of, to me, an extension of, not of that, but that whole technology, this whole artificial intelligence technology. If you can get out there right now and start learning about this, getting published, looking for clients, and in the interim, position yourself as the expert anyway, because you're going to be the expert. You know, there's going to be a lot of opportunity, I think. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I hope that everyone listening is feeling better about their career life choices and less intimidated about the technology. And this is the thing. Open it up. Play around with it. Ask it about a movie you want to see. Ask it about vacation deadlines. Play around with things you've already written. Um, Put in articles that you've already published and ask for different headlines. Um, The biggest thing is prompt engineering. The more specific information you, just like if you are asking a provider for advice on a patient, if you just say, give me advice for um, a patient recovering from mastectomy, the advice will be general. If you say a patient that is, you know, um, breastfeeding or, you know, has young children and is young and is very anxious and has a lot of questions, and lives in a rural community without access to health care, I need, they're going to give you a very different response. Wow. Is that correct? Okay. Yes. So, so that is what you have to do. You have to give the whole story to ChatGPT because you're going to get a more empathetic answer. You're going to get more targeted than just, I need recovery information. So if you are watching or listening and you want to learn in depth about prompt engineering, go check out Jennifer's course, Improving Your Productivity by AI Writing. Where can they find it? Is it on your website? Yep, it's on my website. And we'll then put you a click, link. On, click on courses. Yep. Well, Jennifer, I think people are going to be so relieved after watching this. I think they're going to be excited now and feel like, oh, there is still room for me as a writer out there, even with AI. And, so and I, want Beth, to... I want to give you a special code for your readers for a discount. Oh, thank you. Yeah, go ahead. So. Oh, you, we'll put it in the show notes. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Awesome. That's great. Well, thank you so much. Is there anything else that you think someone else might add? So don't be scared. Play around with it. You're not behind. <laughs> It's not going to take over your job. Don't plagiarize. View it as another article on Google. Fact check everything. And think of this as just another interesting evolution. And the the next couple months, I think, are going to be bumpy as a freelance writer. I'm not going to. It just is. Because clients are figuring out. We're figuring. It's going to be a little rough. Hold on. It's going to settle out and it's going to settle out in our favor. Even if you lose some clients because they try AI, just just hold on because yes. it's going to come back. I promise. Yep. And hone your marketing message. Yep. Emphasize all the things, all the value that you bring that AI cannot. That and the other is. thing is there's certain types of articles and work that I don't think can be replaced by AI. We didn't talk about this. Can I add this real quick? Yeah. One is thought leadership. So it can Thought leadership is ideas, perspective that's in someone's head. So it could be thought leadership for for a nurse on the oncology floor. That's your specific experience and insights. Um, It can be from a hospital CEO, their specific perspective from their their view. That is going to increase because the, the personal perspective is going to become more valuable. Um, I don't think copywriting is going to be taken over because it has to be unique other than headlines, but like the messages that that's, that's going to stay. It's going to be, it needs writers. I also think that think innovation. So if you are writing about 
we chat GPT can't write about things that haven't been built yet or aren't out there. So if you're in the medical field, any topics you could do that are emerging, where you're writing about new advancements, new technology, new research, new treatments, that cannot be taken away because it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Exactly. So, so those are areas to focus. Um, and also, I think that there's going to be an increase in um, an increase in podcasts and webinars because that's going to be is personal. This has been one of the funnest shows I've done. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed it. <laughs> it's a good thing you're back. <laughs> All right. So again, go look to the show notes and check out Jennifer's course. Jennifer, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. That was fun. Um, I, and if anyone has any questions, you can find me on Facebook. I'm happy to answer any questions from your students as well. Thank you so much. Bye. And you, you have been listening to another episode of the RN to Writer show. I've been your host, Elizabeth Haynes. Don't forget to follow us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, and click that YouTube subscribe button because you're going to want to get notified whenever we publish a new episode. Until the next time, keep pitching.